Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I just recorded a video and I was like 80% done and then I decided to scrap the entire thing. I just said like, screw this, like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna record this anymore. Um, just because like, I'm not gonna mention the pro name, but it was just kind of boring, right? Like I thought I could do uh, more entertaining gameplay, so I pulled up Re. Like we're just gonna modern be Re. And I know, I know I have some controller players in the audience, so I definitely want to cater to some of you guys as well. So we're gonna learn and bother you re and see how we play Soul Arena and we can take some, you know, good lessons away just so we can apply them in our own Soul Arena gameplay and just get better at fighting in general, man. Like, I think that's really, really important. Okay, these guys are just trolling. What am I watching? I hope these are like the stream sniper bots that just come in and, and give him free kills because if those, that's the quality of fights, or, <laughs> like, I'm kind of sad I scrapped. Okay, so these guys are not so good. He just aimbotted through a bush. What am I watching? Okay, wait. These guys, this is just super chaotic. He already has six kills. I'm not gonna lie, six kills kind of crazy. So hopefully we have some challenging fights that he runs into. He does have 7.6k, like, arena points. So that is significant. It's not like we're not gonna be running into some decent people. Okay, let's watch this. This fight, let's see if he saw anything at all, or if he's just doing read things. Maybe he's just doing read things, low-key. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he's just jumping in because he just doesn't care and flipping every fight. But because his aim is literal aimbot, he's gonna win. Okay, so here... Third party comes along. He's quite literally one HP, so he needs to expand out. Up double flop, two minis, two splashes, and then get back up to four HP before he fights this guy. Maybe he'll go for a counter shot if this guy aggresses through. But no, he just builds layers of metal and then just opts to opts to heal off. That's pretty simple. Pretty self-explanatory. Flips the cone so he doesn't have to cancel his heal. Tries to fake edit. You see that edit into a reset to beta shot, but I'm not gonna lie, I think he did it too fast. Like you did it so fast that like this guy didn't even realize what was happening. So like it doesn't do it. You try to beta shot, obviously. But he just does it so quickly. Okay, this guy just takes the wall. Okay, so when when the enemy, if you guys didn't know this, some of you guys may know this already, but if you, if the enemy takes the wall and has it and he's threatening to edit, um, try to hide here, right? If you hide on the right side from your perspective, the right side of the wall, then when they make the peanut butter, what ends up happening is like, okay, you ended up hiding behind the peanut butter. It takes them a little bit longer to go for that shot. And then hopefully by then you can swing your second pickaxe and then take the wall because you usually will take two pickaxes to break a fresh wall, uh, especially after they edit. So it's really important here. Like after he like messes up a little bit, makes the wall weak and then the enemy takes the wall. Look, look at his movement. He grabs it and he's thinking about facing in, but then here he can just take it. I'm pretty sure. Take it, make a middle window. He does a lot of edits, man. I'm not gonna lie. He's baiting the shot. That's really clean, though, because he does those edits to bait the shot. Because you have to realize, I'm gonna draw a little timeline on screen right here, okay? So you have to realize that this is the timeline, okay? Let's pretend that yellow is Reet, okay? Yellow is Reet, and then red is the enemy, okay? So what's happening is like Reet's doing a bunch of stuff here, like let's say, right? Reet's doing the fake edit reset stuff, and then the enemy is going to shoot because he thinks that there's an opening and you can just pump uh, Reet. So you're trying to pre fire him. Right, but Reet just like resets right away and then holds. One thing I want to emphasize, like look how fast he does it. This should prove to you that it is possible on controller. You just have to get mechanically good enough. And I agree that it is a disadvantage compared to keyboard and mouse players, but it is still possible. That's all you need to care about. He baits the shot, and that's really important because Reet does this more more than any other player that I've watched. He baits the shot a lot because then you don't really need peaks because you can just make wide edits because the next available shock and shot for the enemy is going to be somewhere here right but reed's gonna edit and shoot before that next available shot is even possible right he's gonna shoot somewhere in between here and then before the enemy's able to even shoot if he doesn't you know kill the enemy within the next shot then he'll reset before their their shock and shot is ready so let's just watch that again uh, now that you understand that concept the idea of shock and cooldown you can then use that to your advantage by baiting shots and then immediately editing if you see them shoot it, there's no audio right now but if you see the wall it kind of flickers right here because the enemy just shot the wall. And then Reek goes for the edit right away. It doesn't matter if it's a peak because they cannot shoot and you just pump them in the head. And even if you just get 100 damage, that's pretty significant in the fight. It should put you on the on the front foot. So basically, I think that was pretty good. I, I, I imagine we're going to see that pattern a lot more. Uh, another aspect of Reek's gameplay that's really, really powerful. And one thing to understand is like not all mistakes are equal or not all good things are equal. What I mean by that is like... You could have something that's part of your gameplay that's making you really, really, really good, but it's not as flashy. And one thing about Re is his aim on controller is spectacular. It's really, really, really consistent. Probably the best I've ever seen on any controller player. And he uses that as to his advantage because that's why you feel confident to jump forward and play aggressive is because his aim. His aim is crisp. It's super consistent. And because of that, he's able to actually uh, do the moves that he does. A different controller player who doesn't have as consistent aim wouldn't be able to do the things that Re does. It's that simple. Right? Aim is not one of those flashy things that you put in a montage. Of course, 200 pumps are good and, and they're cool and stuff, but it's not something that you would like, like obsess over. 
okay but it does have like a huge significance in terms of uh fights like in terms of whether or not you win the fight and it's really really important so i do recommend whatever reed does to like practice his aim I'm, I'm, to be honest i'm not really sure what it is but um gotta figure it out and do it man that's that that's that's like the what it, I, if i had to give you some advice i think aim duels on controller can help i think focusing on your aim while you're practicing while you're in creative while you're in arena focusing on it mentally paying attention to it can help you as well i think that in itself can build uh your ability to aim well so you'll see his intention right here his intention was try to peace control after he sees the opponent move to one side right here he doesn't necessarily i mean the, honestly the opponent has no option so he should have just pieced it right away um and and you would have been you would have been good he, and then when the opponent flips the flips the wall and runs over i think he could have gotten it earlier but it's all good but yeah you can see his intention he's paying attention to the enemy movement his eyes right now are trained right here and he sees the guy flip the cone right blueprints out so he's flipping the the ramp rather uh and then runs over to the left right and the, the cool thing about that is like you can piece pre not like predictably you're not like guessing out of the blue you're not making gambles per se but you're pre you're using the information in front of you you see them move to one side and then you use your information to try to piece and it's like when you watch pro players it seems like they piece control out of the random like or try to uh, like try to guess where they're going but most of the time they can actually look through the builds and actually see where the guy's going and this is not that hard of an example but there are better examples where it's really really hard to see where the opponent is but the pro players are paying attention another hint that could absolutely help you in this regard is to pay attention to this this footprint mark when you can't see the opponent physically because there's so many builds in between you and them then just watch this what will happen is like let's say it starts here and then it'll move over to the left so you can see their intention just off of your screen just off of the visual of the audio right so that can totally help you if you pay attention to that as well that one was really good so he just breaks the wall instead of trying to replace it because that'll slow it down he knows the opponent's not going to hold so there's no reason to replace it and then goes to the shot gets a free damage so paying attention to your opponent something that reed does for sure and i think a lot of pro players will do it but that's how they're good guys like they're not making guesses if you were just making guesses you would be very inconsistent as a player but because you're using the information provided to you that you're going to be very consistent if you actually do the right thing based off of the information right so it's really really important you pay attention to your opponents okay so here this way you can kind of predict this is this is a prediction right this one is not based off of information but based on pattern recognition meaning off of the past games that you've played you can see how people behave in this case after you get this very you know threatening shot of 100 damage right here and you don't take damage what do you think the opponent's going to do they're going to run away and if you had to guess where they're going to run away they're going to either run in this direction or this direction right like either this way or this way right and he just predicts the one over here uh and gets the peace control grabs every wall except the right and now you can see there's only two exits for the enemy so what are they let's try to trivia you know quiz you guys there's only two exits you can go this way right or you can drop down and in your opinion which one do you think is more accurate which one's the better play in my personal opinion i think the drop down is better because if you go out this way i really believe reed's gonna piece that way if i let's just watch i actually haven't i've never seen this video before so let's see <laughs> okay <laughs> okay okay fuck me all right <laughs> god damn it i would have gotten pieced by reed let's be honest so reed goes for the the less obvious like piece meaning um he knows that the enemy is gonna drop so that was really really good god that like that was that was good that was good by reed yeah so uh, most pro players because i've watched a lot of vods and youtube videos especially last season right um and i've just watched a lot of people with peace control and they usually go for the first most obvious option they never go for the more like second crazy option like that's really good by reed and i've seen that play before that's not what i'm saying like i've seen it's it's not as impressive when the enemy only has one option to drop down and then you drop two blocks and then grab the box that's not as impressive but in this case the enemy literally has two options and still chooses to drop down and reed was one step ahead of him so that was really really impressive that's why i wanted to watch reed i'm not gonna lie <laughs> like this is a big reason okay so he's down on hp this is a good situation this is not something that we've seen before um he's down on hp because the enemy grabs the wall and opens a window and goes to the nice shot on reed reed is significantly down on hp he's sitting at 60 hp right now and you'll see that he won't edit unless he absolutely has to he's gonna try to heal he's gonna attempt to heal he's gonna test the enemy see what the enemy does because if the enemy doesn't aggress properly then you just have free heal that's a win for you but if the enemy does aggress properly then at that point you're gonna expand a little bit but you're also gonna try to go for counter shots to get them off of you because a good player trying to aggress you to stop you from healing will succeed like they won't let you heal right you might get a splash here a splash there but like you'll spend maybe 500 metal doing that you know what i mean so because you don't want that you have to go for the counter shots 
you have to go for the counter shot this is what's going to make you a better player a lot of people have gotten into the mindset it's not bad it's just halfway correct right it's not bad to try to heal and continue to expand but the, the problem is you're sacrificing 600 700 hard match to get a full hp worth of heals right that's the problem at that point you need to use pre-fires and counter shots counter shots are basically edits well timed with the enemy's pickaxe and with practice you can get good with that there's no reason why not it's actually not that hard believe it or not so i, I really hope you guys have confidence when trying to learn that sort of stuff because it's all a timing thing it's not a mechanical thing it's not a speed thing speed is difficult right but there's a reason why people like epic will despite not having a lot of speed can still be a really fundamentally good player and fighter there's a there's a good reason for that he's not flashy he's not speedy uh and he's still a good player Okay, so Reek dies. That's unfortunate. Let's try to see what the mistake is here, okay? Because I actually think you can learn from this as well. So, a lot of cuts in this video. He pre-fires this, edits straight down. Why doesn't he edit this way? Any, any reason? I mean, I know the reason, but I'm just going to give you a few seconds. Why doesn't he do the edit? So, let's pretend, right? Let's say this is the floor, right? And it's facing the same direction. Why doesn't he edit these two tiles? The problem is, is when someone's jumping in, if you edit these two tiles, it's more likely that they get on your side. Like, it, 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 because of their movement, their momentum is going to send them towards your half of the block. So if you just do the single tile edit straight down, it's really nice because you get to drop out of the box. Also, if you do this edit, you're still in the box with a weak cone because when you edit the cone, it becomes weak in terms of its HP. So they can just, you know, dump three SMG bullets into it and then just replace it really, really easy. But if you edit this and double edit straight down, it doesn't matter if the cone's weak because you're not in the box anymore. So there's several benefits when you do that sort of play. It's really, really good. The only issue was, is that that guy still got into reach tile. Also, he missed the double. I think the double could have helped, but I think he's low key still dead. So several things. The, the single tile edit is pretty good, but he needs to do it in the left corner. This is kind of hard to see. I think he needs to do it right here. This guy's kind of moving like this, right? He's kind of moving like this. This is kind of hard to predict, but this is how you get better at reach level. This is how you improve even further, right? You, it's, it's sometimes it's hard as a pro player to like, Try to figure out what's the next step because you have so much right you have like 98 percent of things that you're doing right already and then this niche like this small detail is like what makes you even better and so he needs to realize that the momentum of this guy is going like this and he can't edit that tile because that guy's just gonna match him and so he needs to be in that bottom left corner and edit down there that way the clone's actually gonna block him and defend himself so that's really really good again it's super nitpicky but that's literally what you have to do as a pro player in order to get better for it and i'm sure reed knows this not like a surprise of course Sometimes you know the theory, but you don't know the execution, or you just mess up on the execution. So there's a difference. But he goes into the next game. Re YouTube videos are really nice because they're cut super well. So, you know, the usual stream sniper will move on past this. Hopefully he wins this game, gives us an entertaining game. But so far, his gameplay has been super entertaining. Super, super good for us to learn to. Because Reed, fundamentally, is just like a different player. He doesn't follow the classic box fighting um, sort of techniques that most people do, right? And that's super interesting. He kind of breaks the rules a little bit you know what i mean and that can sometimes be good because it, what it does instead of offering him like good you know solid trades it offers him speed he's able to quick dead someone really really quickly and that's beneficial um so he just jumps in here let's ask yourself why he jumps in all right hits this guy for 50. i can't see if that's 50 white i think it's 50 blue I think it's 50 blue so he hits him for 50 shield and then here he just jumps in and i think part of the reason is of course you know, his aim is super reliant, so he he will take the bet and, and try to be like, can you aim duel me? And he's his his guess is that he'll just win every single time. And there is a little bit of disrespect because it's Soul Arena. And uh, the fact that, it, like, you know, if you're fighting a pro player, you wouldn't really do this, of course. Another reason could be that he just made this box recently and could be throwing him off because he just, you know, he just kind of caught off guard. He didn't have good bearings, the enemy. Having speed as a factor in his decision making. A lot of pro players don't actually have that, right? Some, some players who play super textbook or, like, kind of high ping... They tend to not care about speed as much because they can't like they you know they, they need to focus on the technique or maybe they're not as perceptive as Reed is because Reed really pays attention to his enemy's uh, body language like for here he's not so scared because he just peace control the guy and if you look at the where the guy's facing he has zero crosshair placement on Reed so he, there's genuinely no reason to be scared a lot of people see a person and be scared Reed tries to look for his eyeballs you know where is where is he looking because if he's not looking at me is there a reason to be scared so his move in here is pretty good. So he gets HP advantage off of the first few trades and then moves back behind his cone to at least cover some of his silhouette. It's kind of like a lazy peek. If he's really facing someone that he thinks would have good aim, I think he would go all the way back. But again, it's just like a, a really, really good peek uh, to cover at least half your body so it's harder for the enemy to hit you, right? So you can use the cone silhouette to cover your silhouette. Ah, oh, he gets hit hard again. This is the this is the part of like the thing with Reach plays though. He sometimes gets hit pretty hard, but it's okay because he'll adjust after the fact. He'll do the correct thing after. So if he gets hit here, he does do a decent amount of damage, you know, significant you know, damage to the enemy, but he's much lower than the enemy. Let's see what he ends up doing. Should heal, yes. 
So the video cuts. He ends up healing a little bit. He only has one splash left, which is very interesting. Classic over the pre-fire and love this edit again. There is a huge difference, guys. Do not edit towards the enemy. Edit straight down single tile. That's really, really good. And there, uh, I've already mentioned the reasons why it's beneficial to do that. So I would recommend doing that, guys. Cool. So yeah, if the guy SMGs in, you can pre-fire. It's super solid. Okay, crazy piece control places the ramp. Ah, uh, he gets pumped. Yeah, he's going a little crazy here. Probably looking for a clip because he's on stream. It's natural. Yeah, he's just going crazy for no reason. <laughs> That's unfortunate. It gets pumped. Probably he has no heals. Okay, so let's see how he deals with this situation. He has 100 HP, no shields to pop. And in this case, he has to play like almost perfectly. He can go for a sidewall edit. Let's see what he ends up doing. Oh, so close. He almost died. Yeah, place floor above you. Beautiful. Yeah, that's not bad. That peak is good, but you have to be very rehearsed on it. Like, if you take too long to do the peak, then the enemy's going to light up the crosser and do super good stuff, right? But you have to you have to be really rehearsed on that peak. I think it's good as long as you're rehearsed. Okay, so he picks up the chugs. He has good stuff. He doesn't have a lot of mats in this fight here. Okay, good piece. Oh my god. What did I just watch? We're going we're gonna to instant replay that. Dude, that was kind of crazy. Look at this. This one's fine. It's more of a surprise thing, right? Like, if you if the enemy tries to hold a wall, you've already pieced it. You know, it's really, really fast. So that's why he feels confident to just go for a shot. Now he's winning, so he can 50-50. That's why he has super aggressive movement. But this added pattern is kind of sick. Not going to lie. He edits the stair the other way and then continues the already edited floor and edits that down as well. And then he should just win here. Oh, very, very close. You know, he's rushing the fight because the enemy is really low. So he's trying to end it as soon as possible. <laughs> of course. Of course, of course. I think the enemy did heal once. Dude, Reed does not give a fuck. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, replace. He stands a little bit further back. Like, when you replace, you can't hug the wall. It's really hard to replace. He is, like, really close, of course, but there is a difference between hugging and where he's standing. Like, right now, when he ends up replacing the wall, he's standing, like, right here. What I'm saying not to do is stand right here. Because, yes, you can replace the wall, but you have to look, like, straight down at your feet, and then it's really hard, or straight up. Either or can get you the wall, but it's really, really hard to actually grab it. But he does a lot of damage to this guy, by the way. This guy is super low. In this case, you just jump in, right? You want to get in cleanly and swiftly. That way, the opponent can't do any pre-fires or nasty business. Okay, really good, you know, low ground peak. Okay, he's going crazy. Here we go. <laughs> no way this works. Dude, this guy's fucked, man. Oh, he replaces it. What is he doing? <laughs> Dude, that would have been so clean if it was actually, like, one shot. If he just one pumps it, it would have been nice. But, dude, let me be clear. This clip stuff, this montage stuff, it's not practical. Like, if you're using Arena to practice, like, and you suck at fighting, or you're not as good as fighting as Re, then for sure I wouldn't try to clip people. Try to focus on winning the fights first, and then get mechanical. I think that's, like, a really good piece of advice. Like, a lot of people have fallen victim to the montage era of Fortnite, which is basically, let's try to clip everyone. And I watch their gameplay, they can't actually kill them normally either. So it's a matter of priority. Like, actually get good at fighting first, and then do what you want right like the, the most important thing is like of course you have the right to like fool around whenever but like i think it's a little backwards if you're fooling around when you have a lot of issues with your fighting and you're actually trying to take the game seriously if that's you of course not everyone takes the game seriously which is completely fine that's just crazy man i know it's a classic re move he just full pieces the box underneath <laughs> just works out so it's super cool yeah it's good it hits 86 so this is a classic diagonal box fight guys it's really important you know this and how does he re how does Reed know this guy's gonna edit by the way? What are we looking for? Let's blow this down, right? How do you know or predict that the enemy's gonna edit? Watch their move. There's several things. First of all, when they pull out their shotgun like this, it sort of means they're preparing for an edit. Because what do most people do? They pull out their shotgun and then go to edit mode so that when they're finished editing, their shotgun pulls out automatically, right? Because this guy's pulling out his shotgun, it's a clear like what like if he's pulling out his shotgun just staring at his own wall, it just doesn't make sense unless he's trying to pre-fire. So this is a good, you know, sign. The second sign is his movement. He's moving this way. Why is he moving over here? Because there's a peanut butter coming. And the only safe place you can be is over here. Somewhere in this area, right? So if the enemy moves in this direction, you can predict a peanut butter coming. Then the third thing is the blueprint. Right? The blueprint's kind of hard to see sometimes. So the other two signs are more reliable. But the shock and switch over the shoulder. And then the movement is everything. Right? So let's watch it full speed one more time. Just so you can see it in action. Just so you guys can use this in your own games as well. So watch this one more time. You can see it, right? That's how he pre-fires, right? It's not a reaction time to the edit. You're reacting to the movement. And the best part is if you miss, because you end up building the wall anyways, there's no harm. It's not like you lost HP for doing it. It's just a free attempt. 
a free shot on goal if you will right and right here he goes to the bottom it's so good man i think more people should do this because it's not as obvious because like he goes up and obviously the opponent sees them go up right and then he's like okay like opposite direction i should just drop down and then re like the principle of opposite direction does not work against re at all did you see if you don't know what opposite direction is i've talked about it in most of my videos but i will reiterate for new viewers it's just the fact that like if you're getting aggressive on and you need to expand or get out of the box you try to go from the opposite direction of where the opponent is what reed does is he goes up so then everyone thinks oh you should just drop down so you can get further away because if i go to the side i can just get peace controlled from above with doubles and then so he just drops down but then reed's already there so reed's really really quick with that and it's a really really classic peace control move that i think it's a reed signature move honestly um and other people other control players have started doing it there should be timestamps down on the timeline below on the youtube video so if you want to go to a specific fight you can absolutely do that but for now guys thank you so much for watching my youtube videos i really appreciate all the support and i'll see you guys next time